A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to our video. Today, a very fun exercise that I gave to my 10th grade students at the start of the new year, and you should definitely also try it out for yourself. Now, what is the exercise exactly? More on this in a second. What I want to remind my students of is that there does exist Papa Pythagoras and also similar triangles. It's really important for what we are learning at the moment. And this right here is a nice exercise to employ either one of those or both if you wish to arrive at a solution. But if you choose to do the exercise, you can do it using any way you wish. There are probably a thousand ways to solve this exercise. I'm personally gonna use integration for this, obviously. Um, <laughs> and now here's the exercise. We are gonna start off with a humble right triangle. Now, you choose either one of the kefeets. Kefeets are not the hypotenuse, so the shorter sides of the right triangle. And you're gonna place a perpendicular on either of the kefeets, like this. 90 degree angle here too. Now, here's the question. It's very simple. Where exactly do you need to place this perpendicular on one of the kefeets such that you get two geometric shapes out with the same area? Try it out for yourself. It's fun. By the way, this video has been sponsored by the one from people over on Pre. And so if you're interested in mathematics or anything in the STEM field, then definitely make sure to keep watching the video up until the end for more information. And now we are going to dive right in. As mentioned before, I'm gonna use integration because this right here just screams for analytic geometry. Why? Because it's a right triangle. And if we have a right angle here, that already just tells us coordinate system, place a coordinate system right here in my corner. Okay, I'm gonna do so. I'm gonna place coordinate system here. Put that bit in right here. That's the right angle. We have a cafeet B here and A here. This right here is our hypotenuse. And we are gonna put our perpendicular in on either of the cafeets. In my case, B, the longer of the two in this example. Now, how can you proceed? Well, we are doing analytic geometry here, meaning we are going to parameterize this geometric shape in terms of functions such that we can um, move on in a smart manner. Really depends on the problem, actually. But what you can see here, this line segment is just a segment of a linear function. Linear functions are of the form f of x is equal to mx plus n. I'm not going to use a and b because a and b are already used. Now, we know one thing about this linear function, namely that it's going to intersect our x-axis, so the root of the linear function, at exactly b. Meaning we can just rewrite this as the multiplication of its linear factors. But let us go through the process. If you want to find out something about the zero of function, we are going to set the whole thing zero because y is exactly zero here, where it hits the x-axis. Now, zero is equal to mx plus n. And if we were to solve this for, let's say, our zero of the function x0, which is nothing other than b, then we are going to get that um, zero is equal to m times b plus n. And now we can, for example, solve this for n and substitute n into here. This is one of the things that you could quite possibly do, meaning that n is nothing other than negative m times b. If you put all of this into here once again, you are going to arrive at f of x being equal to mx minus m times b. Now m is a common factor of both of those, so our linear function can be rewritten as the multiplication of its linear factors, namely the slope times x minus b which does make sense because this is the whole point of linear factors. If you plug the zero into one or more of the axes, really depends on how many linear factors you have, it's a polynomial of the first degree, so only one linear factor, then this must vanish, it must go to zero, which it does. If you plug b into here, everything's fine. Now, how is this gonna help us? Well, remember what our original exercise is. Let's say that this right here, our um, our little funky perpendicular is going to be placed at a spot 
x naught, for example. Then what we are going to do is we are going to break this up. What we want to do is we want to take the integral basically under this curve that we got here. And this integral will be breaking up into two equal parts. One will be the integral from 0 to x0 and one will be the integral from x0 to b. And what we want is we want both of those integrals to be equal because the integral is the area under set curve. Meaning our condition for solving this exercise is that the integral from 0 to x0 of obviously f of x because that is our function which we are referencing um, f of x is m times x minus b dx must be equal to the same thing just with different up and lower bounds namely x naught to b um, so the integral from x naught to b of m times x minus b dx and with that out of the way, we can proceed to our calculations. Now, m is independent of x, so we can drag it out of the integral. Our slope is non-zero um, be because if it were zero, then it would be a constant function. So we wouldn't have a right triangle, obviously. So um, if we were to drag it out of the integral, we can cancel it out on both sides, leaving us just with those two integrals. And now we can just proceed and just solve the integrals okay independently so um, we can break this up into the integral from 0 to x naught of x dx and then minus if we bring this integral part over here minus the integral from x naught to b of x dx this right here is the first part and we have the same thing just with a b but b is independent of x so we can bring it to the front so plus b times and we have two integrals which have exactly b as a common factor namely the one from 0 to x naught of um, with a negative sign because we have negative b right here um, of just dx and if we bring this to the other side plus um, the integral from x0 to b dx and all of this must be equal to zero in order for us to fit our initial condition and now we can just solve everything so this first integral is just gonna be x squared over 2 from 0 to x0 minus x squared over 2 from x0 to b plus b times and here we are gonna get um, I'm gonna start with this one x evaluated from x naught to b and then minus x evaluated from 0 to x naught and all of this must be equal to 0. Now let us sort a bunch of things out. You are gonna notice that those are just simple polynomials without any um, addition at the back so they are just gonna vanish so without any constant at zero they are gonna vanish what you are also going to notice is that we always have two parts which are the additive inverse to one another um, but not quite actually <laughs> I just now noticing because um, this right here is the second part of, of the integration meaning we get a negative sign here negative and negative becomes positive so meaning we got two times the quantity with x not plugged in so we got x not squared over two but two times giving us just x not squared so we are done with that and that and then we are going to get negative b squared over two okay now for the next part this right here vanished, we are going to get the same thing here. We are going to get 2 times x0, but with... Um, give me a second, I need to think with a negative sign here with x0. Yeah, that's the second part of the integration. So we got negative 2 times x0 times b and this and that vanished this is also done and we are going to get um, b squared because b is going to be substituted into here we get b squared plus b squared must be equal to zero now that looks like a mess 
at first sight, but it actually isn't too bad. So you see we got b squared minus b squared over 2 is just going to result in positive b squared over 2. And this right here is just a quadratic in our x naught. Because, well, you see, this is just a quadratic equation, obviously. Um, and we can, it's, it's already in a nice form. We can solve for x naught. Meaning, if I put this over here, as basically the last node, we are going to get um, negative 2 times b is the coefficient on our um, first ex exponent, x naught part. Meaning, we are going to get um, x naught, 1, 2. It's going to be equal to um, just b, positive b, plus minus the square root of. Now we are going to get b squared. And over here we are going to get negative b squared over 2. Just like before, b squared minus b squared over 2 is just positive b squared over 2. So we are going to get b plus minus the square root of b squared over 2. The square root of b squared is the absolute value of b, but we got plus minus here, so we don't care about that. Also, b is going to be a positive value, it's a line segment, meaning we are going to end up with two solutions for x0, x0 1, being on the one hand b plus b divided by the square root of 2, or x0 2 being equal to um, b minus b divided by the square root of 2. Now, if we were to um, put the b out as a common factor, we are going to get that this is b times 1 plus 1 over the square root of 2. And here we are going to get b times 1 minus um, b divided by uh, 1 divided by the square root of 2. Now we need to go through a bit of argumentation which of those solutions is actually valid or if both solutions are actually valid. Now if we take a look at the first solution, b times 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 is about, um, so 1 over square root of 2 is square root of 2 over 2, so that's about 0.7, so we get b times 1.7, meaning our line that we are going to get here is going to be placed 1.7 uh, times the distance of b. Oh, that means our line segment would be for example here. It's not inside the right triangle anymore. So this solution right here, even though it's positive, just like b, is actually not valid. The solution we are looking for is b times 1 minus 1 divided by square root of 2, or 1 minus 1 over square root of 2 is um, round about 0.3. So about a third of the way of b, placing this perpendicular, we are going to get an equal partition of two geometric figurines, which are going to have the same area. And yeah, this basically concludes the problem already. And I think it's a pretty fun one. Which method did you use? Just Pythagoras or maybe similar triangles or maybe something completely different? Let me know down there in the comments below. And if you did enjoy what you've seen today, if you're interested in more mathematics, or geometry or anything of that sort, then the contents of today's sponsor brand might be the perfect fit for you. Now, this is most definitely one of the problems where you are gonna benefit so much from drawing a little sketch because a little sketch can go a long way and especially when it comes to finding out which solution is actually valid it makes a lot of sense to take a look at the sketch a bit further and this is not the only time when graphics or visualizations go a long way to make hard mathematics problems easier for the mathematician or just the student in and of himself and the cool thing is Brilliant is the perfect source if you want to learn something by doing today. Doesn't matter what it is in the STEM field you want to learn, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer science, chemistry. No matter what it is, you want to start learning today. You can do so over in Brilliant in a very visualized manner. Now, just take a look at this random course that I'm gonna show you right now. 
what can you see? What you can easily see here is that the mouse is being used to track around things, to play around with parameters, just to do a lot of things with the visualizations and the graphics over on their app and website. And this is exactly the point of Brilliant. You don't want to learn something in a too abstract way. It becomes rather boring rather quickly. Um, it's kind of exhausting to do abstract things for a long time and it's just in general way easier to learn something if you get a better grasp of what you are doing there by seeing it and especially by doing it. And with that concept in mind, Print is just the most superior website that I have used up until now on the internet to learn something new on a daily basis. And it doesn't stop with mathematics, as mentioned before. It doesn't matter what you want to learn, especially in their computer sciences courses and their Python courses. Everything that you need to learn to understand something on the basic and even further level is there. It's already prepared and you can try it out too today by using my link at the top of the description, print.org slash With it, you are gonna get free trial of awesomeness, 30 days of just trying out the whole landscape of Brilliant for yourself. And if you think after this trial period, hey, that was so amazing, I wanna do this for longer periods of time, I want this to turn into a long-term relationship between myself and Brilliant, then make sure to make completely clicky clicky on the linky linky to get 20% of an annual premium subscription which is a great deal considering how much content they already have, have available on the website and how much content they adding on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way and this concludes today's video. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today also make sure to subscribe to the channel and yeah that's basically about it. Also don't forget to check out Flemmy's Wood if you want to see a different side of Pop of Flemmy. And up until next video with you guys, Flemble Day. See ya!